Well, I am Charles Talmadge, born here in uh, Southwick, Mass. In 1843, I was educated here in the local schools. And of course, you have to picture a one-room schoolhouse with one teacher and all the different ages at the same time. Uh, that was our district schools. I was a uh, farmer, and my father was a well-known farmer in the area. His name was Thomas. And I decided that I wanted to further my education in agriculture. So I went down to Connecticut, where I was an apprentice at a large farm, where I was learning the absolute in and outs of farming, uh, the business of farming, and the science of farming, and the trends in farming, and how to do everything. Um, it was at that time, however, that the war broke out, and I decided it was my patriotic duty to join the war effort. And since I lived in Connecticut at that time, I joined the 25th Connecticut Volunteer Infantry. Um, and I was, uh, we were all sent to Louisiana as part of the Department of the Gulf, uh, the Gulf meaning the Gulf of Mexico, of course. And so that's where I went. Now to break from character as myself, I'm a member of the History Commission in town and I found a letter just as a complete stroke of luck that has Charles Talmadge's name on it. It's from the drafting committee and it's to the Southwick Board of Selectmen. Before they had an official draft, there was a sort of unofficial draft which was a quota system and the state would go to the local towns and they would demand a certain number of men to fill the ranks. So they would dem demand a certain amount of, amount of men from each town. This letter is from the drafting commission to the Board of Selectmen and at this time with the names of the men on this list they are uh, they have filled their official quota. So it was a good thing we no longer had to, to get any of our men to join the war effort. However, as an ironic twist, the real draft comes just a couple months after this. So we had to do it again anyway, and that time it was mandatory. Um, I was captured uh, really early into my military service at a place called Brazier City, Louisiana, and I was sent to a hospital which was much preferable to being sent to an actual prisoner of war camp. I was held there uh, until my actual term of enlistment expired and the Confederacy decided that I was no longer a threat. Uh, they decided I probably would not re-enlist after being a prisoner of war and they were right. Uh, I went home directly after I was released. 5,000 of my, men, my brethren soldiers uh, in the Department of the Gulf died of just disease. Another 5,000 died uh, in combat. We were involved in the Port Henry siege, which outside of Vicksburg was the last real stronghold the Confederacy had uh, on the Mississippi River. So it's actually quite an important battle, the siege of Port Henry. It was 48 days of continual bombardment, 24 hours a day. Uh, from the ironclad ships in the river and heavy, heavy artillery on the shoreline. Um, Fort Henry was basically a series of forts. Um, so after the, after the bombardment, there was a series of uh, infantry assaults. The Confederacy only surrendered because up the river, Vicksburg surrendered. And at that point, they decided there was no longer any point, uh, although they they did uh, hold out quite well to 48 days straight of being bombed. Um, most of the Confederate soldiers were sickly and they were sent to hospitals and most were actually furloughed right away. 200 or so were sent to prisoner of war camps. After the war, I uh, came home and I ran a sawmill here in town which was washed away by floods. Uh, at the same time as that, I also took over my father's farm and I became well known in agriculture. I grew tobacco, uh, small grains, and was well known for Jersey cows. Uh, I collected my war pension in 1907, um, and I had a few raises uh, during the remainder of that time, raises in the amount of the pension. 
Um, I was married in the 1870s and have only the one child, Frederick. Um, my wife, my wife's family was from Tallinn and Granville. My family was from Southwick, Granville, and Connecticut. So we were basically local people. Does anyone have any questions about the Civil War or anything?